in the heart of the urban jungle, the king lion fearlessly enters the den of the jackals. This isn't his first time, and likely not his last. You see, the king lion does this to show all the other woodland creatures who is really in charge, and also to remind the hungry jackals that if they f around, the lion will tear the out of the jackals. For example, here, the king lion firmly tightens the cap of the jackal's water bottle while she isn't looking. The bottle is now sealed shut and the water is trapped in the bottle forever. Besides, the jackal has no thumbs. He is the king of this jungle, as he is in every jungle, commanding respect around the world. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Clevy and it is so nice to meet you. You guys, we are presented with another video today. And of course, this is reporter versus Donald Trump. What went on? What happened? And from the title, you can see um, she had a meltdown. Oh my God. She has a meltdown as, you know, the black audience, you know, roars with laughter at Trump. So you guys, let's dive right into this and woof. It's about to get interesting. So, thank you. Thank you. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white okay. supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> and I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit, uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've done so much. And, you know, and I say this, uh, Historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them and I gave them long term financing and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I would love I think you it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. Trust you with another I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President That's Johnson who signed the Voting Rights and Act? for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let me just ask a, a follow-up, sir, and then we'll move on to other questions here. Uh, some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket, as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? equity, inclusion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me, is, that, that give, is Give me a definition the then. Would you give me a definition DI. of that? Give me a definition Sir, of that. Sir, I'm asking you a question, no, no, a you very have to direct define question. It. Define the 
define it for me, if you I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't, because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn, and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody should look into that, too, when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. said? I mean, I really don't know. Could be, could be. There are some, and there are uh, plenty. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. <laughs> And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that Well, interview. you told me it was the longest one of your life, so <laughs> we had a good discussion. All got played. Donald Trump showed up at the convention for exactly three reasons. One, to try to dispel the notion that he's scared to debate a black woman, a presumption one can draw from his refusal to commit to debating, B, to debating VP Harris, who again, for those in the back, is a black and Asian woman. It's also why he lost it like a grumbly senior at the retirement home who didn't get his jello dessert when ABC's Rachel Scott challenged him to answer basic questions. Uh -huh. And how likely is it that he would have shown up at all if the lady from the network that paid a $787 million legal settlement for spreading the big lie wasn't included on the panel? Second, to steal the attention that Vice President Kamala Harris has hijacked from him because she's just more interesting and her support is more joyous and rooted in popular American culture. And three, to create clips to play for his very white, very right wing MAGA fan base of him standing up to the blacks. Joining me now is April Ryan, White House correspondent for The Grio and an MSNBC contributor. Oh, April. Dude. Deep breaths. I watched that today in absolute <laughs> horror. You were one of the people who spoke out against this invitation. Talk to me about how in the world it happened in the first place. Well, first of all, the NABJ, an advocacy group for black journalists, the black press, um, extends invitations uh, every election cycle to the presidential candidates. But for this cycle, this special and unique cycle, um, Donald Trump was invited. But we know the story. And this is where I'm going to put the butt in. We know the story. We've seen the movie. We spit the popcorn. Trump handled that just the way Trump like, I love every time I hear people say, oh, Trump is scared to debate this, or Trump is scared to do this, he, he doesn't want to. I'm like, I'm like, who? Which Trump? Is it the Trump we know? Is it the Trump that you guys are forgetting so soon that this man walked into North Korea? Are you? Are you is it that same person you say he's scared to debate who? Nah. Uh, no, that's the biggest joke. And you see her move with the, <laughs> the move with the water bottle was as bad as getting shot and standing up and doing fight, fight. <laughs> that move was like, okay. And I like the way that he answered her. I like that he told her, you know, um, that, that was so rude. He was just like, mm. and always talk about Miss Reed. You said Harris is interesting. Our entire campaign is for. Is this, is that, is this, is that. She's black and Asian. Okay, ma'am, we hear you. But I have a question for you. Why didn't Harris show up? Black Harris didn't even show up for black journalists. Why? But the person who you always label a racist and all of those things have the, have the simple courtesy of showing up. And it didn't even come late. Make it make sense that your black Harris didn't even show up for the black journalist. That was that was the National Association of you know black journalists. She didn't even show up. What happened? 
I'm yet like I cannot wait for that. Honestly, we saw we saw Joe versus versus Trump. I, I, I just can't wait for for that. And even if Trump doesn't want to go on a debate again with with Harris, it makes sense because he did that with Trump, um, with Joe already. Joe stepped down, so whatever happened. But like he said, he will still do it again. He will still have that debate again if at all you want it. But even if he doesn't want it. He already did it. You guys that are stepping down, one is stepping down, one is coming back up. You will not, you will not stress him. He already has a lot to do. But you guys, what's your opinion? What do you think about this whole situation? And you know what's actually disrespectful to black women? Is pretending to be one. Because you guys know that we have. You know she said, and for the people at the back, Joy was like, for the people at the back. She's black and Asian. Mm. Okay. Okay, we hear you. We hear you. <laughs> we hear you. You guys, what do you think about this? What do you think about this video? Honestly, November is, is by the corner and we've, we've seen a lot in the past few days. We've seen a lot in the past few weeks and we're like, whew. Like I say in the beginning, like I say every single time we talk about, you know, this election, this coming election, I say, please be informed because I cannot, I cannot forget CNN a few days ago calling some black, some black men, you know, low information votes. <laughs> please be informed. Get to know who you're supporting. Get to know whose policies resonate well with you. And get to know who can get the job done. And you go there and vote.